Hey all, so back again. Um, as I said in the last video, the intent of um, the Blue Calais build is to utilize as many parts as what I already had and to do it on a, on a budget. Um, so this uh, yellow VL of mine um, basically has a lot of good parts in it. So I've got VT front brakes, um, you know, so the twin piston calipers, uh, the bigger discs, the hub conversion. Um, I have K Mac um, strut tops in it, King Springs. I've got a 28 spline LSD diff with 390 diff gears. Um, so, all that stuff basically, I'm going to pull out of this car and uh, throw it in this Blue Calais. I guess you're probably thinking, why aren't I fixing up this yellow VL? Of course, it's you know your classic canary yellow BT1 look-alike kind of saga. And don't get me wrong, I love this car. It was my first car, and it's got a lot of sentimental value. But at the moment, it's got far too much cancer in it, far too many holes. It's going to take too long to fix. It would suit either you know even doing a full restoration on it would be pretty hard i think in my opinion however if you're going to turn a car like this into you know a dedicated uh drag car or track car you know tubbed and all that kind of stuff it's i mean it's ideal because uh, a lot of the stuff where the rust is you've got to cut it out anyway so there's potential that that might actually happen um with this car but for the time being, um, I'm going to leach whatever I need out of it um, to satisfy the Calais build. So today, um, I'm going to pull the struts out and I'm going to pull uh, the brakes off. So brakes and struts and the diff and then start looking at throwing that into the blue Calais. Um, and then obviously the stuff out of the blue Calais, I'm gonna throw in this so that way this thing's a rolling shell and then I'm good to go. So let's get stuck into it. Two caliper bolts, 90 mils, cracked them. Um, caliper was a little bit of a pain to get off just because there was a slight lip on the edge of the disc. So I got that off, got it just slung out of the way. Um, the disc, so when you convert an earlier model Commodore um, to the VT twin piston caliper setup and disc, you actually go from what's considered a hub type disc brake, that's when the hub um, and where the bearing goes and where it sits on like this like stub axle um, is part of the disc, whereas the later model Commodore, the VT um, and onwards, um, it's a floating type disc. So that's where your conversion hub comes into place. So this is the conversion hub, spindles are the same. So conversion hub basically goes on the normal early model Commodore um, spindle and then you can just put your VT floating disc slides in over the top and then your actual VT twin piston caliper um, bolts up to the factory early model Commodore um, caliper flange um, and it's pretty much that simple swap the lines that's it so what I'll probably do with the other side is I'll just pull the whole strut assembly 
with the lower control arm and all that kind of stuff out together. But I kind of just wanted to go through the process a little bit with you guys. Um, so what I need to do now to get the rest of the strut out is uh, disconnect my steering rack here, um, disconnect my uh, sway bar link, um, and disconnect, I think they call it like the Z bar or the S bar or something. So this thing here. And then undo the top of my, uh, undo the lower control arm, the inner um, lower control arm, and then undo the top of the strut. So just the three bolts at the top and that whole thing will just slide out the bottom. So uh, dare say I'll clean it up while I will, like, give it a paint, make it look a little bit pretty before I throw it in this other car. So. As we made the times that we misplayed Give these a little sneaky coat. Okay. What are we doing, Reese? We are assembling a front strut. After it's been... Oh, I touched it. Yeah, you touched it. <laughs> I went to touch it. <laughs> I touched it! You touched the wet paint. So, so, it all went pretty up. Painted. Somewhat pretty. Freshened up. As, as pretty as they're going to be. And um, then these aren't fake King Springs, they were originally King Springs. They were King Springs, I just painted them yellow now as a tribute. Now they're John Deere Springs. <laughs> it's, actually, <laughs> it's actually John Deere yellow is the, uh, is the colour. Well, tractors um, are tough, so yeah, you know. yeah, it's tra a tractor color, so it's going to. Um, I think it's going to increase the uh, the torque. <laughs> Perfect timing, right? <laughs> so we'll just shout so you can hear us over the compressor. Yeah. Well, you did use them to pull it apart. I did, only because that old guy was here and he thought I was going to kill, kill himself. Well, being, being lower, they're usually pretty good, but you need to have the coincide shocks, otherwise if they're too long, your spring will just flop around. You've got to make sure your insulator lines up with the top of the spring. She's a bit squashed, this insulator, mate. Right? Thank you, sir. That's my tools. 
What tools are we using today now? Um, side cutters, punch, this weird hammer with this welded on. Listen, weld that, on? that is an invention of mine. It is a nice, neat little one. Gives a nice little little throw it's in It's so there. heavy. <laughs> it is. Just, it's for getting them tight areas where you can't fit it a hammer. Supplies. So, we're gonna do a quick tech tip. I think they call it in YouTube world, and it's on split pins. So, um, I've done a couple of split pins in my time around the traps. So, hmm, there's a. I won't say the right way, but there's better ways that you can do them instead of just pouring them in and flipping around, however. So, what I like to do is, I like to pull through like that. I like to keep my long tail at the top. I grab my long tail and as I'm pulling tight, I bring the top one up and that kind of locks it in. See how that's pretty tight in there, like that. And what I do is I trim the top tail like so. That's too big of a hammer. And I take it like that. I like to go more than halfway through the center of the shank of the bolt but not more than the edge of the thread. And then I trim my bottom tail. Now what you want to do with your bottom tail is you want to trim it so this washer behind, you want to cut it so that when you fold it, that it's going to be as close to that washer as possible but without touching. And that is... Split pin 101. Split pin 101. I learnt it from, a, from this guy. Look, as... as simple as it may sound so many people absolutely abortion split pins and then that's when you get the dramas of you go to pull something off and you can't get the split pin out because it's bent and twisted like a banana and it just makes life a drama well this ain't camera magic folks i nailed this bad boy first go so it's super tight doesn't move, the head's nice and tight, and I have trimmed that to perfection. That's how you do split pins the Dale Vlogman way. Okay, you can stop recording now. Splitting, split pinning the world one split <laughs> pin at a time. One split pin at a time. <laughs> That's mint. Uh, okay, turn it off. VT twin piston calipers. I got me um, John Deere yellow King Springs. That's how you do it.